I'm Mary Ellen Iskandarian. I'm president and CEO of Women's World Banking. Women's World Banking has worked to make sure that low-income women in developing countries have access and control of the financial products and services that they need. I change the game for low-income women so that financial service providers see them as valued customers, not charity cases. Empowerment is being able to control the decisions in your life and, and recognizing that you have the agency to do so. So we've found that women experience four kinds of changes in their lives. So the easy one is material change. So they have more income or maybe there are more assets because they've been able to save or they've received a loan. The next one is they've, they have a cognitive change. We can measure the fact that they've learned financial education, financial literacy, how to feel comfortable working on a cell phone. So that cognitive change is very important. The next kind of change, I think, starts to get really interesting, and that's what we call relational change. We find that when a woman has access to and control of financial resources, she takes on greater decision-making authority in her household. And then the final type of change is really the, the most personal. Women often experience a sense of self-esteem, self an ability to plan for the future, more sense of their own agency, their own place in the world when they have control of financial resources. So FinTech presents a hugely exciting opportunity, but we have to get over one really, really big hurdle, and that is making sure that women have access to digital technology. There is an 18% on average gender gap in smartphone ownership around the world. We've seen fintechs that provide peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms. Women do very well when other women recognize the opportunity in their business and then, and then fund it. So there's lots of opportunity, but we've got to make sure that women have access to the technology. Gender lens investing is nothing more than looking through the lens at our fully half the population being served by a product? Is there an addressable market that's not being um, dealt with by this, this company because they're not serving women? Are there women in the leadership so that gender diverse teams are solving the complex problems that a company might, um, might take on? I see gender lens as a critical part of the due diligence process, but not in any way compromising returns, financial returns. The majority of gender lens investor and gender lens funds that are out there are, are typically investing in women-led companies. And I think that's a big differentiator for Women's World Banking. We're agnostic about you know, the gender of the founder of the company. We believe very wholeheartedly in gender diversity on, on leadership teams. But if a man founded the company, but is committed to serving women clients and doing it with gender diverse teams, we're very supportive of that. So I've been, I've been around a long time. I've been a banker for mo really most of my career. And while we still have a long way to go, there are still far too few women on the boards of financial service providers. FinTech, this big disruptor, only 14% of them even have one woman on their board. So we have a long way to go in terms of leadership and governance. You know, I think back when I was a, a fairly junior banker, um, applying for a job in a, uh, a team that I really wanted to be to join and being told quite frankly right to my face it wasn't anything I was you know they were hiding about it was like no 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 we have the woman in our group already as if you could only really have one <laughs> and that that the position uh, was, was already filled.